Motherhood is busy, but this one routine will set you up for success before you even leave your room in the morning. About a year ago, we had what I refer to as the summer of crazy, when the whole world blew up and there was rioting in the streets and everybody was filled with anger and it was just insane. And all of that anger and all of that fear were just flowing into my house and into my heart in a lot of ways. And at that point, I discovered a routine in the morning, my wake up routine, that really made a huge difference in my ability to set the tone and the mood for my entire day. Norman Vincent Pill wrote the book, The Power of Positive Thinking, and he said, you do not need to be a victim of worry. Reduced to its simplest form, what is worry? It is simply an unhealthy and destructive mental habit, which means it's happening in our head, which means we can cure it by what goes on in our head. And this is really what the wake up routine is all about, is getting your head in the right space so that the rest of your day can flow really positively and hopefully. Fear is basically looking into the unknown future and expecting something bad to happen. It's not even a set thing that you think will happen, just an idea that bad things will happen. Whereas faith and hope are looking into that same unknown future and expect something good to happen. And so we want to shift our thinking from worry and fear about bad things coming at us and put it into hope and positivity because we don't know what the future is going to hold. We might as well look at it through a positive lens. So there are five things I do every single morning that set my head up and my heart up so that I look forward with a lot of positivity. The first one is just telling yourself the truth. And from that same book, Norman Vincent Pill had three truths that he tells himself every single day. And I do the same thing. So every single morning I tell myself, God is with me. God is helping me. God is guiding me just those three things and it makes such a difference in how I view the world. It's just a paradigm shift to start saying this is how things are and to set myself up mentally for that is it's simple. It only takes a couple of seconds, but it really affects how you see the rest of your life. So that's the first thing I do tell myself the truth and I will I'll always do those three truths but sometimes I will also adapt and have additional truths and say God wants me to succeed God has a plan and it is already in place and I'm already actively in that plan uh, because that was really important to me because I feel like a lot of times I'm like yeah sure he has a plan as soon as I can get my act together then the plan can begin but his plan includes me right now being imperfect and this hot mess that is my life that's part of his plan and it's okay I'm going to make it I, we're going forward this is fine. This is a part of God's plan and we are moving in a good direction. So that only takes a couple of seconds. And then I move on to the second thing that sets me up for the day. And that is gratitude. There are so many different things that talk about the power of gratitude, but I want to tell you just a quick story about somebody who was in a really bad situation and they used gratitude to become very strong in that situation. In Holland during World War II, there was a watchmaker and his daughters and they all lived together in this house above their watchmaker shop. And when Germany came in and took over Holland, they decided that they weren't going to just sit back and watch. They were going to help as many Jews as they possibly could. But then as happened to a lot of people who were standing up for truth during that time, they were turned into the Gestapo and they came and they took him and they sent them to prison. And then eventually they were sent on to a concentration camp. In this concentration camp, Betsy and her sister Corey are standing there looking at the bunks, the dorms where everybody is, and they are stacked many, many layers deep. And they have lots of people sleeping on each one of the beds. And they would, even as they're crawling across these, the weight became too much and it would fall and collapse onto the next bed beneath, which made it way too much for that, that level. And so it would collapse, collapse, collapse. And people would even die in these collapses. It is this really, really horrible situation. And with, and you know, there's no heating and there's no cooling and it's miserable on so many levels. And one of the completely awful things about it is that there were fleas and they just went inside the woodwork and so while they're sleeping after this horrible day of concentration camp work, then they just got bitten all night and it's miserable. And they're having a really hard time just mentally coping. And can you imagine trying to stay positive in this situation? I mean, my summer of crazy is nothing compared to what they were doing. And, but they were sitting there and they didn't know what to do. And Betsy was thinking about it and she said, oh, I know what to do. We read about it in the scriptures this morning. I know exactly what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to give thanks in all things. And Corey, her sister was like, okay, like what, what do you want me to give thanks for? We are in a concentration camp. Awesome. 
but but Betsy is super grateful and she's just really an amazing person and so she says I'm so grateful that we're together and she's saying a prayer you know thank you Heavenly Father for letting us be together and Corey was like oh yes I'm so so glad that we are together and not here facing this alone and she went on to thank him for several other things and then she said and we're so grateful for the fleas and Corey was like, yeah, no, that's pushing it. I am not, I'm not grateful for the fleas. I'm just not, uh, no. And Betsy was very patient and she was just like, come on, Corey, we're grateful for the fleas. And so eventually Corey said, okay, yeah, I'm grateful for the fleas. And um, they went on and they continued to have this experience in the concentration camp where Betsy was very sick. And so she stayed inside the dorms and she would um, knit all day she was making something with fabric and lots of other women were there with her and Corey went out and she did more physical labor. Well, what happened was Betsy had this great skill. She was an amazing knitter. So she got her quota of stuff done really fast. And then she had scriptures and she would sit and share the scriptures with all of these ladies around this room. Now scriptures in the concentration camp are a death sentence, an immediate death sentence. And everybody knows that. And yet these women are so starved for the light of God and for truth that they are saying, I'll do whatever. I'll put my life on the line so I can hear this. But it was still a real risk. But Betsy kept taking this risk over and over and over again. And it wasn't until later that they something was happening and the guards had to go inside the bunks into the dorm room. And one of the guards was like, no way, I'm not going in there. It's crawling with fleas. And that was the very reason that they didn't go in there. It was such a horrible thing that these guys had to endure. That very thing created the space where Bet Betsy was able to share this light with all of the people around her. And so Betsy gave gratitude and, and thanks for, for this awful situation before she knew what she would get out of it. But she was right because it was actually a blessing. So being grateful is one of those tools that we can use that makes such a difference in our lives. It changes how we see things, it changes how we feel about things, and really it helps us to see blessings where it seems like they're not there. So that's the second thing I do, as I just go through and list in my head, these are the things that I am grateful for this day. The third part of my wake up routine is prayers. And I just say my prayers and pretty much I go over the things that I've just thought of that I'm grateful for and I, and I actually thank God. I am grateful for these things. Thank you for these things. And then I tell him about whatever's going on in my life and, and have a prayer. Um, prayer and meditation are powerful antidotes to fear and depression, which is a lot of what was going on in the summer of crazy. There was a lot of fear and a lot of depression going on there. And the cure or the antidote to that is just prayer and meditation, taking the time to not have all of that yuck pressing down on you, but pushing it out and saying right now in this moment, I'm going to be in a quiet, peaceful, happy place to create some space in our heads that will then create space in our lives where we can feel peace even in the midst of craziness. The fourth thing I do before I even leave my room is read my scriptures. This is really important because the truth will set you free. And in your scriptures, you're going to find truth. And the truth is going to set you free from a lot of different things. The truth, like if you have been unfairly put in jail, the truth will actually set you free from jail. But you also have other things in your life that it sets you free from. It sets you free from confusion. It sets you free from fear. It sets you free from superstitions. So knowing what is true really sets us up to be able to make good decisions and to do things that will bring us joy, but also things that are just right. And the last thing that I do in the morning is just picture my day. Now I'm sure you're aware that there are Olympians and, and great athletes in all sorts of different sports will, you've seen them sort of close their eyes and picture going through their day and imagining I'm going to take this turn and then that turn and my body's going to feel like this and I'm going to do this and envisioning this um, performance or this sport before they even go do it. And that mental preparation is super important to be able to do it physically. In fact, I can't remember her name, but one of the gymnasts from America in the Olympics said she was so, so tired when it came time for the Olympics that she really couldn't focus on doing the routine at all. She was completely wiped out at that point, but because she had worked it so many times in her mind and worked it so many times physically, she'd gone through it over and over and over again that she just kind of went on autopilot and she did remarkably well. 
and she really won like a lot of gold medals and did really, really well. But a big part of that was how many times her coach made her run through positively doing each routine in her head, not even physically. He would say, for every time you do it physically, you have to do it this many times in your head perfectly. And that was such a part of the, the process of really winning. And because she did that, she did so well in her Olympic high pressure, high tense moment, she was able to really perform. As a mom, we have so many high pressure moments and it really helps to be able to envision at first when my child comes to me with whatever problem and I'm tired or I've got this other thing going on, this is how I'm going to handle it. Envisioning your day, envisioning solutions to likely problems is one way to really take the burden out of it right first thing in the morning. This whole process takes about one hour and it is the most effective hour of my day. I get the most stuff done because my kids are still asleep at this point and it is the most important things that I am getting done during this time that enables me really to do the rest of it and do it well. If you're struggling with fear or doubt or confusion, try having a wake up routine and it will really help your day go smoother. And if you have anything that you do that helps your day go much more smoothly, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you're doing. Thank you, I'll see you on the next one.